We are recording. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to apologize last week, family and friends. If you're clicking on, this is Frank Marzullo. I'm Frank Marzullo from Christian Covenant Fellowship in Deland, Florida. Uh, last week you clicked on and all you saw was my mouth moving with no sound. <laughs> so uh, if, um, if you're clicking on now, you got sound. Uh, apparently, I, I just never turned my bike on, and uh, that's a problem. So I'm going to redo the lesson again for those that were here in the living room. I get, I get to hear it again, but you for the first time. Go call your friends. Tell your friends to come to the Internet. Come to frankmarzullo.com or spiritualwarfarenow.com and click on and uh, be part of this. I think the Lord wants to set people free. And as I was ex uh, explaining to my friend, it's a little bit at a time. You get a little bit today, you get a little bit next week, you get a little bit next week. And uh, I don't know where my wife went. Jill, would you like to come and explain what God is doing in your life before we get started? I, I am on the air. Okay. Come on, show your best side. evaluation phase at the University of Florida Sam Hospital in Gainesville. It was very long, a lot of tests from head to toe in my hair purple. And, <laughs> and um, it was very frustrating because you didn't know if you were accepted or not accepted or accepted or not accepted. Well, the call came in couple days ago that yes I'm on the list and right now for a lung transplant I need a lung transplant in order to be here for a little while longer but anyway um, there's 12 people on the list in Gainesville right now and I'm one of the 12 and um, I have pulmonary fibrosis and pulmonary fibrosis goes to the top of the list. So depending on what lung diseases the people have, I don't know where I stand mm. in the list, but it could be any moment, any time. I have the phone right here in my little pocket. So it's always with me. Because when they call me, Frank and I have to get in the car. We have 45 minutes to get in the car and start our, our journey. Our, our drive, it's a two hour drive to Gainesville. So that's the time frame we have. That's it. That's all I have to say, except I'm really excited and I'm really freaking out at the same time. <laughs> so we want to pray for uh, the right set of lungs to come in, the ones that will be acceptable and proper size. And Father, we just uh, we know that uh, in order for this to happen, that has to be a tragedy in somebody else's life, but we ask that it turn into a blessing. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that uh, the procedure will go smooth. Thank you for uh, putting Jill on the, on the list. There's many people waiting to get on this list. Thank you for putting her at the top of the list. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to give her many more years. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, and incidentally, there's 90% of all lung transplants are because of pulmonary fibrosis. And one out of six people get the honor. The rest of them can't, can't mm. get on the list. So I'm very privileged that I'm, the rest of my body's really healthy. We're sorry for that. I'm really healthy, but the lungs are not so good, but <laughs> everything else is great. Thank you. Blessings, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, if you turn. Oh, um, that's true. Uh, thank you. There's, if you want to go uh, fund me. Yeah, look, look on uh, Facebook for Jill Marzullo's lung transplant. That's Jill, J-I-L-L, -L, Marzullo, M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-O. 
S, lung transplant, Jill Marzullo's lung transplant, and my daughter Kelly set this up, so look for Kelly Lennon or Jill Marzullo lung transplant. And uh, it has a GoFundMe account for Jill's new lungs. Thank you, Father. I didn't know that was going to happen until uh, my daughter surprised me. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I don't know where, where you're going to find this in the book, but it, it's probably not in the book. We were worship and adore you bowing down before you songs of praise is singing hallelujahs ringing praise is singing hallelujahs ringing hallelujah Number one in your book. We're just going to sing a portion of that. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. On every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within his veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, and blood support me in the whelming flood when every earthly prop gives way then 
and my he's my hope and my stay on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found clothed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand <laughs> boy those words those words so praise God what a week praise the Lord and I, I kind of wonder if the reason why the sound wasn't on last week was because <laughs> you know sometimes I pray say Lord uh, if there's if my flesh is getting in the way please stop it <laughs> Don't, don't let it be said or don't let anybody hear it. <laughs> so I'm wondering if, if by my uh, starting off in a little bit of a rebuke, it was not what the Lord wanted you to hear. And maybe that's the reason why it, it didn't work. Because we've experienced a lot of things in life and some of them are um, brothers and sisters who who love the Lord, who have a heart for Jesus Christ. And how can I say this with grace? That their doctrine gets in the way with a condemning spirit as they're trying to give godly advice. And we've experienced quite a bit of that with, with what's going on with your wife, Mr. Marzullo. Are you in sin? Is your wife in sin? Have you committed sin? Have your ancestors committed sin? And don't think I didn't go through the checklist. But, you know, I, I'm a deliverance minister, and I, and I look at deliverance ministry starting from that aspect. I look to see uh, where the enemy gets in and where he has legal, legal right to get into a person's life. So I, I look at it from that angle first, and I looked at it from my angle that way too. I looked at it to see if there was any sin in my life, if I could correct anything, if there was sin in my ancestor's life, if there's sin in Jill's life, if there's sin in her ancestor's life. And then I came across John chapter 9 once again. I read it. And it's about Jesus walking with two of his disciples, and he comes to a man who was born blind. And he's asked by his disciples, whose sin is this? His sin or his parents' sin? And Jesus said, neither. But this is for the glory of God. And I started thinking about that passage, and I was convicted of that passage. And I hope that this is convincing you and convicting you too before we rush to judgment on, on things. And I've got to look at the deliverance ministry with that scripture involved in it too. Because, see, that's part of the Bible, and that's what Jesus said. And he said, neither. You know, indicating that there was... A understanding that sin and sickness and disease are related. I understand that. But Jesus said neither. In this case, neither. So, I'm looking for the glory of God 
to happen with my wife, Jill. And I want you to start looking for the glory of God. Don't look for sin in our lives. I want you to start looking for the glory of God because I, I went down this sin checklist and I, I was going at it like crazy trying to figure this thing out. It sure flies in the face of a deliverance minister. But I want you to understand that Jesus said neither, but this is for the glory of God. We've had friends that said, we have friends, dear friends, I love them dearly. If you had more faith, then she'd be healed. I want to tell you something about my faith, friend. My faith is that I can move a mountain with my faith. I believe God can heal my wife. I believe she can get right on that operating table and the doctors exclaim, wait a second, she doesn't need lungs. Her lungs are perfect. I can, I can tell you that for fact, that I believe that with my whole heart. But I also believe, and how many of you heard this story before? There was a flood. And the flood came up to the porch and a rowboat came up and said, let me get you off onto dry land, mister. And the guy says from the porch, no, I'm waiting for a miracle. God's going to uh, save me. And then the, the water rose up to the top of the roof and the guy's on the top of the roof and a motorboat comes and a motorboat and the guy in the motorboat says, come on, come on on board. I'll take you to dry land. And the guy on the roof says, no, I'm waiting for a miracle. God's going to save me. And then the water over, overcomes the roof and the guy drowns and he goes to heaven. And he says, what, a, what, 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 what's this all about, God? I was waiting for you to save me. Oh, wait, one more thing. The helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> the helicopter came and said, come on, I'm dropping you a rope. And the guy says, no, I'm waiting for a miracle. So anyway, he drowns, he goes to heaven and God says to the man, what's the matter? I sent you a, a, a rowboat, I sent you a motorboat, and I sent you a helicopter. You see, family, we have to take life. We have to hold on to life. We have to hold on to it dearly and take whatever means that God is going to provide for the miracle. Now, some of your doctrines may go contrary to my doctrine on this because I've changed my doctrine along the way. And I hope that you're pliable like that, too, that you can change your doctrine when faced with the facts and the truth. Which is it, his sin or his parents' sin? Neither. But this is for the glory of God. Now, I don't know how God's going to get the glory out of all this, but I do know this, that God will get the glory out of it. And he's changing me along the way. John 10.10 10 says this. John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the devil's, that's what he does, only. And then he says, Jesus says, I came that they might have life and might have it abundantly. Now I'm looking for that abundant life. I'm looking for that. The message that I'm going to be teaching you tonight is how to maintain and keep your healing and your deliverance. How to maintain it, basically. Because a lot of times people, uh, and, and I was explaining earlier before this message started, that people go from ministry to ministry to ministry trying to get help and trying to get help. My job as a deliverance minister is not only to do deliverance and, the, and to teach you how to do, but how to maintain your deliverance. My job is to teach you how to do self-deliverance, to recognize demons that are in your life so that you have the abundant life that Jesus promised. So the devil's intention is to steal, kill, and destroy. And what he's doing right now with my wife is destroying what does he want to do? He wants to destroy our bodies, our souls, and our spirits. That's what the devil wants to do. God's intention is to give abundant life in each one of those areas. 
body, soul, and spirit. Now, um, one of the ways we lose our abundant life is not to fully understand the abundant life. To fully understand the spiritual principles and just not believe them. We, in either case, Satan uh, will rob and kill and destroy us of our healing and deliverance. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is important for you to understand. Because a lot of you are not living in the way. You understand that Jesus is the way, but you're not living in the way. You know what that means? That means... The Bible is just a book to you. You have to live the way of the word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, healing and deliverance comes to us when we live in the way, when we live in the truth, and when we live in the life of Jesus. Knowing about the way and the truth of the life of Jesus Christ is not enough. That's not enough. You have to live in that. You see, when you get delivered of evil spirits or you get a healing, you're supposed to live as if Jesus did that. In fact, he did. He's the one who sets you free. He's the one who heals you. Knowing what, what is true and living in truth are two different things. You know, they're two different things. What is true becomes truth when you start living it. Please, understand me. You have to start living truth. Now I'm going to read Colossians to you. Colossians 1, verses 13 through 19. He, that's Jesus, has delivered us out of the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, of his love. God's delivered us in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all, over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things he may have preeminence. See, God transferred us out of darkness into his kingdom. All things were created for him and for his purpose. He has first place in everything. People live their lives contrary to that. They live their lives as if they have first place in everything. Hello, I'm speaking to you, family. You and me too, I'm included in this. Live our lives as if we have first place and we forget that Jesus has first place in our life. The whole reason you and I were created was to give Jesus first place. That's right. We were created for that, for his pleasure. And there's a void that we feel in our hearts because we live contrary to that. And so there's always this struggle going on. We're living contrary to be in first place, and yet he is supposed to be in first place. He. That's the whole purpose. I have in my, above my desk a little script of paper, and it says, is it my work? Is it my plan? Is it my pleasure? Or is it his work, his plan, his pleasure? And I have to keep on reminding myself. I've got to remind myself every day that it's he, he who has first place, the purpose of God. And so when we live contrary for that purpose that we were created for, it's called sin. 
S-I-N. And what's in the middle of a sin? I. S-I-N. And so when we sin, we're putting ourselves in first place. Everything. Whenever we sin, every time we sin, it's we're putting ourselves in first place. <laughs> you see? Huh. Ah, the abundant life. How are you going to get it? When you put Him in first place. That's how you start maintaining your healing and your deliverance. See, deliverance we're going to do today. We're going to have some deliverance at the end. But you want to maintain that. You want to have Him in first place instead of you in first place. When healing and deliverance are experienced, it's not the end of the process. It's the beginning. There's going to be a struggle. There's going to be a fight. I always tell everybody, I said, you know what? Expect right away. Expect the enemy to come at you right away from the thing that you got delivered of. Right away. You know, he's going to engage you in battle. But there's got to be a victory. And you have to have the victory by allowing Jesus to be first place in that area where that demon was. You cannot allow S-I-N anymore. You cannot allow I to be in first place anymore. So here's 15 defenses I've um, accumulated here in order to maintain your healing and your deliverance. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, it says, put on the whole armor of God that if you see now, if you neglect any part of it, guess what? There's a chink in your armor. If you neglect to do this, let's look at this. It says, finally, verse 10, Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles. What's that? That's the schemes. The devil's got schemes. He set you up a long time ago to fall today. He set you up years ago with rejection so that you would fall today. He set you up years ago with fear that you would be afraid today. That's right, sister. I'm talking to you in Arkansas. That's right. Years and years ago, he set you up. Somebody said something to you that made you afraid, and now you're so paranoid, you think that every lie of the enemy is real. He set you up years ago. A scheme, a while of the devil. And then it goes on in verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age. These are the four areas that we actually struggle in, principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So we have the demons that were of wickedness that Jesus wrestled against. We wrestle against those. We wrestle against powers. We, re we wrestle against principalities and world forces. And then it says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. Huh. And having done all. Everybody say, having done all. You see, that's it. Maybe you haven't done all. Maybe you, maybe you haven't done all. You want somebody else to change your diaper. <laughs> oh boy, I'm going to get letters. You want somebody else to heal you and deliver you. And guess what? Having done all means that you've had to have done something. Having done all. That's why I went through my checklist, family. Have I sinned? Did I sin? Did Jill sin? Did she, as her ancestors sin? Having done all. Take a stand, then it says. Having done all to stand. Stand therefore. There comes a time where you have done everything and nothing seems to be working. But, verse 14, stand therefore. 
Uh, there's so many places in the Bible I can show you where they just stood. The children of God just stood and the enemy was defeated in front of them. Having done all, stand therefore, having your uh, girded your waist with truth, you see. <laughs> stand firm. The battle has been won. We only fight from the standpoint of already have won. Jesus already won from you. Stand therefore. All right? Stand firm. Now stand with truth. Number two, it's not your truth. It's the truth that the believer encircles himself with. The truth of the word of God. That's what you circle. That's what your truth is. The, the, the word of God that prevents me or you from falling into error. That's right, because we could fall into error if we don't encircle ourselves with the truth. Who is Jesus? He is the way, the truth, and the life. We have to encircle ourselves with Jesus and live in the truth of the word so that we don't fall into error or deception or illusions. So it's not a girdle of truth, so you won't lie. It's a, a girdle of truth of God's word that protects you from the enemy. God's word, it is written, it is written, it is written. Exactly what Jesus did in the desert with the devil. You encircle yourself with the truth. And then it says here, uh, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now see, what does the breastplate do? If you look at a soldier, a breastplate protects his heart, our inner man, our secret thoughts, if you will, our motives, our intentions, the breastplate of righteousness. I want to tell you, there are thoughts that come to my mind. I go, where in the world did this thing come from? I'm sure they're in your heads too. Where did this come from? It's, now, this breastplate of righteousness is something that protects your thoughts, your motives, your intentions. So what happens when we put on the breastplate of righteousness? Well, we put it on and there's no corruption that could enter our heart. If we put it on and we hold fast to that. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, it talks to us about the warfare that we're in and it tells us to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, I believe that is one of the things that we should look at when we look at the breastplate of righteousness. We have to take our thoughts captive. Number, uh, the next one down, uh, the third one down. I'm sorry, the fourth one down. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having shod your feet with the preparation, preparation of the gospel of peace. Isaiah 52, 7 says, How lovely on the mount who announces peace and proclaims news of happiness. How lovely are the feet of him. You see, I want you to take a look at that. God wants us to announce salvation and God reigns and he orders to, in order to keep your healing and deliverance, you put your feet in the good news of Jesus. Let people know about Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let people know. It brings peace. I tell you what, when, when I was in the hospital one time, I remember bringing peace to somebody. Their son was really injured. And I just kept on telling her, this lady that was waiting for her son, I said, be patient. God's going to heal him. God's going to take care of him. And Jesus Christ loves him. And certainly it brought her peace. And he was okay. The young boy was okay. The next one down is the shield of faith. Above all, taking up the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, in some of your Bibles, it says extinguishes, puts it out. But I want you to understand, it's a shield that doesn't block you. 
it's a shield that puts out, it extinguishes, it will quench, extinguish the flame, the dart. And see, the darts do fall. You don't believe me? Look at my wife. She's got a big dart on her. Look at me. I've had darts hit me too, and so have you. You've had darts that hit you. But it's our faith that puts it out. Our faith puts it out, the fiery darts, the fiery missiles, if, if you will, quenching them. And the next one is take up the helmet of salvation, and that is know that you're saved. Know that you have salvation. Know that you have received Jesus Christ in your heart and you accepted him as your Lord, and he is now in control of your life. Know that you know that you know, no one you know her, that you uh, are saved, that you are loved, that you are delivered, that you are healed. You see, the, the helmet of salvation protects you from all the doubts and the fears and the temptation, and the shield of faith puts out the fiery missiles of the evil one. Next is the sword of the Spirit. It's the Word of God. And it's not your sword to use against somebody else. It's the sword of the Holy Spirit, the sword of the Spirit. So I always tell people, I say, don't use your, don't, you know, go to the Bible to try to find something to dispute or to argue with. Don't do that. That's the devil at operation there. It's not your sword for you to use that. I tell you, it's the Holy Spirit. That's his sword to convict us of our sins. That's what it's all about, the sword of the Spirit. And then it says pray in the Spirit. And I do that a lot. I pray in the Holy Spirit. And I tell you what, pray in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it builds you up. Pray in the Spirit. Next one. To maintain your healing and deliverance is know your position in Christ. No. And number, the next one down after that would be number three. Make a positive confession. Now, I don't know about you, but making a positive confession means that you are with people who will proclaim good things and not negative things into your life. What do you call them? Toxic people, Jill? Keep away from toxic people. And try not to be toxic yourself. Romans 8, 10, 8 through 10. But what does the Bible say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith which we preach is right here, right in our mouth. For if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What's that word? Saved, sozos, healed, delivered, eternal life. So guess what, family? Um, preach it. Hear yourself preaching it. And guess what? Salvation not only comes to you, but it stays with you as you're preaching it. So it says in verse 10, from the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is not a one-time deal. This word salvation is Yeshua. Huh. So we have, this is a, this Jesus that we, that we preach, that we teach, that we that we uh, confess with our mouth. He is our healer. He is our healer. Confession. Make a positive confession with your mouth. So it has to be a word of faith that's in your mouth, and you must believe it in order for salvation. Uh, unless we get off the railroad track, the train could strike, right? I tell you what, if you hear a sound of a whistle and you look up and you see that big spotlight coming down the railroad tracks and you see people up ahead of you, not only will you get off the track, but you'll yell at them and say, get off the track. You see, what you do is you're using your mouth. So if you believe in the same respect, 
that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed and we confess it with our mouth and we say it to other people, guess what? Not only are we healed and delivered and set free and heal, uh, of our affliction, but others are too. Understand that. Okay, that's number three. Number four, deal promptly with sin. Um, it says here in Isaiah 59 too, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you so that he does not hear. I tell you what, deal promptly with sin. Don't push it down. Don't think that God is winking at your sin. You can get away with it. You said the sinner's prayer. Deal promptly with sin. Let the Holy Spirit convict you right away. Don't postpone dealing with your sins. Don't delay over it. God's, I tell you what, God's blessing may be delayed because you're delaying about dealing with your sin. God's blessing wants to, you, God wants to bless us. I tell you what, when we're sinning, when we're in the I, me, my, if we're in that type of a mode, God can't touch you with healing and blessings. Deal promptly with sin so, so God could release his blessing upon you. So, so sometimes, you know, illness will reoccur or um, an expelled demon will want to return as a result of a person falling into S-I and don't get involved with that. Don't do that. Okay, number five, stay in the word. Joshua 1.8. We have a, a, a period of time here where Joshua was, was, um, was before God here. Joshua 1.8. And it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but shall, you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you will be careful to do according to all that is within it. Then, it says, For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Stay in the word, family. If you want to be prosperous, if you want success, stay in the word. Because God can speak to you from his word. As you're reading his word, he could show you, say, oh, gee, I didn't see that before. My, Jill, my wife was telling me about something that she had never seen in the Bible before. And I had forgotten about it. And it was the day that Jesus was resurrected from the dead that the graves were opened up and the people that were in the graves came out of the graves. The people, uh, righteous people that had died and were in the tombs, they came out and they went into the city. Can you imagine that? There are things in the word that you f forgot or you read over, or you glossed over and were of no importance to you. But when you start to read the word and the Holy Spirit opens up your eyes and you start to ponder on what you just read, I mean, I'm, I'm awestruck. I'm awestruck. After the resurrection, bam, all these people came out. What did that prove? Well, that was a witness. That was a witness of the resurrection. You see? <laughs> Ah, praise God. So, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 says, My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight and keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to your whole body. Life and health. I want that. How, you, how do you get that? Well, once again, read the Word. Read the Word. Reading God's Word will maintain your healing and your deliverance. Number six, forgive. Uh, I, I deal with this a lot. I tell people about forgiveness a lot. Uh, one of the first things that I ask people to do when they come to me for healing and deliverance is I say, make a list of all the people that wounded you, hurt you, disappoint you, mistreated you, uh, all the offenses, all the abuses, all the um, um, everything that bad that's happened to you. Make a list of those things and make a list of the people that did them. And then we'll go over them one at a time. And the reason why is because 
we forget that holding a grudge or holding unforgiveness sends us to the tormentors. A lot of times we're looking for healing and deliverance because we are in torment. God, you know, and, and, and I don't know what your doctrine is here, but I'm going to blow you right out of the water. Oh, God is good all the time. I know that. And I know that everything that comes from, from God is good. Even Job said that, by the way. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When all that tragedy and calamity happened to him. But when we hold unforgiveness in our heart, we make ourselves higher than God and more important than God. That's why he said in Matthew 18, verses 34 and 35, that if you don't forgive, you shall be sent to the torturers. And it says, so shall my heavenly Father do to you if each of you does not forgive your brother from your heart. Now, I always thought the devil was out there doing the things, but here's one thing that God allows the devil to have. He allows the devil, uh, like I said, you may not agree with this doctrine, but I want you to go into the scriptures and find it. Be a Berean. Check the word of God out to find out if it's true what I say so that you may believe it or disbelieve it. One of the two. Don't be a, a, a skeptic, a holy skeptic without first searching the word of God. So we have Jesus saying, Jesus saying, that if you don't forgive, neither will you be forgiven. That's in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6. If also, you have unforgiveness in your heart towards your brother. You're sent to the torturers, demons, until you should forgive, until you should repay all that was due you. That's forgiveness. And then it goes on to say in verse 34 and 35, this is Matthew 18, verse 34 and 35, so shall my heavenly Father do. Jesus is speaking about his heavenly Father sending people to the tormentors or torturers until they should forgive. So shall my heavenly Father do to you, as each of you does not forgive your brother from your heart. And that is why I tell people to make me a list of all the wounds, all the hurts, all the disappointments, everything that was ever done to you, or said to you, that wounded you and hurt you, disappointed you, when you were mistreated, when you weren't respected, when you did get affirmation from your father or mother or from some other leader and it hurts you, well, that's why you make a list and you go over it one at a time, forgiving, I forgive so-and-so, I forgive so-and-so, I forgive so-and-so, I release them from my heart, I forgive them, I forgive them in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless them, I bless them, I bless them. I've got a list. I've, oh, yeah, that's right, I've got a list. I got a list of people that have done that. Oh, you don't think so? You don't think the religious community has wounded me and hurt me? Oh, yes, they have. I got a list of pastors. I've got a list of preachers. I've got a list of teachers. I've got a list of evangelists. I've got a list of, of the body of Christ. That's right. And I pray for them every day. I pray for them. I release them. Why? Because I don't want to be sent to the torturers or tormentors. And that's why. See, God instructs us to do that. So forgive. That's number six. Number seven, crucify the flesh. Galatians 5, 24 through 25. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. Have you? Have you crucified the flesh? Huh. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That means the I and sin is no longer in there. Maybe you put the I in there, but now it's got to be taken out. So it'll be S-O-N, Son, Son of God. For if we walk by the Spirit, 
let's also walk by, if we, if, if we live by the Spirit, I'm sorry, let us also walk by the Spirit. <laughs> Dead men don't sin, do they? Dead women don't sin. Sometimes a brother or sister will not keep a healing or a deliverance simply because they're, not, they're nursing their carnal flesh, living by their instincts. They're living for themselves. Now, I have a, a scripture here. I want to read it to you. A lot of things that we don't understand, but we, we need to start understanding this scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Whose sin is this? This man's sin or his parents? And everything give thanks. Be content and everything. And everything give thanks. That's number seven. Number eight, praise and thanksgiving. We're going to put gratitude in here also uh, for number nine. And we'll have uh, praise and thanksgiving and gratitude. You see, it's God's will that in all of life situations that we will express our gratitude and praise towards Him. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wow. Job had it really down pat. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You see, he was in Paul was in prison. He was in beatings. He was in beatings without number, it says here, in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. Without number. He couldn't even count. He couldn't count how many times he got beaten for Christ. <laughs> I bet you would remember, and I know I would, how many times I got beaten. How many times I got shipwrecked, dangers in the city, dangers in the oceans, dangers in the rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from our own countrymen, dangers in the, uh, in the country, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers in the sea, among false brethren, uh, labors, hardships, sleepless nights, hunger, thirst, cold, exposure, without food, and daily pressures of concern. Concern about what? Concern about the body of Christ. And everything, give thanks. Wow. Paul went through it a lot. So we have that. <coughs> Excuse me. I also uh, found in the Word of God that grumblers and complainers wandered in a desert for 40 years. It does us no good to grumble or grumble or complain. Does us they wandered. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. <laughs> Not only that, as I remember reading that even serpents came out from nowhere and bit them. You know? <laughs> and all and God was taking care of them. But they still complain. <laughs> I, can, I can just hear God. Would you stop complaining so I can bless you? <laughs> now, uh, we have Psalm 100. <coughs> it says, Make a joyful shout to God, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. This is how we maintain our healing and deliverance, family. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Some, <laughs> I was watching the news the other day, and it, it sounded like the people uh, wanted God to serve them instead of, you know, they serving God. And they got it all backwards. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are the people of his sheep and of his pasture. Verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. That's what we're going to be doing as we're traveling to Gainesville. 
Be thankful to him and bless his name, for he is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. You see, we proclaim his loving kindness, his faithfulness. It spills over into our relationship with others. <laughs> this attitude brings healing and deliverance to us. Number 10, fellowship. 1 Corinthians 12, 21. It says, And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. And again, the head say to the feet, I have no need of you. Family, we are to understand that we need fellowship. We need fellowship with the body of Christ. Don't isolate yourself. Don't exclude yourself. Just because your ministry and your calling is different, don't exclude yourself from the body of Christ. Mingle with them. And uh, Paul goes on to say in uh, verse 25 and 27, that there be no division in the body, that the members should have the same care for one another. If one suffers, all members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individual members of it. Now I want you to capture that vision. At one time, I had an affliction in my hand, and it was as if somebody was smashing my fingers with a sledgehammer. Um, my circulation was so cut off that it would sharp be pain, sharp pain in my hand when the circulation came back. It was called Renaud's syndrome. And the pain was so intense that my whole body hurt. It was only my fingertip that I had a problem with, but my whole body hurt. And I want you to understand, sometimes God allows things to happen so you understand, you understand what he's actually saying in his word. You see, if, if Jill is hurting over here, then somebody over here says, <coughs> let me comfort that. See, that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be doing, comforting each other, encouraging each other. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Maybe I'm getting deliverance early. I don't know. <clears throat> Number 11, submit to authority. Peter <clears throat> exhorts us in 1 Peter 5, 1 through 5. He exhorts the, the elders to shepherd the sheep. And to shepherd the flock unselfishly by not lording over the people and by being an example. Verse 5, And all of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another, for God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. Hebrews thirteen seventeen. Obey your leaders and submit to them. Well, that word submit means to be um, influenced by them. The word submit is not actually under the thumb. The word submit in this sense here, that means be um, encouraged by them, be persuaded by them. And so it says here, for they keep watch over your souls as to those who give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with grief. Number 12, cultivate the fruit of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit. Hear me now. Cultivate the fruit. You want to maintain healing? You want to maintain deliverance in your in your lives? Cultivate the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So when you see something in your life that it goes contrary to the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you don't see love, you see hate, you see resentment. There's a demon involved there. There's a demonic force at work in your life. When you don't see joy, but you see sadness and sorrow, then you're seeing something that is demonic in your life. Understand that and deal with that. If you don't see peace, but you see anxiousness and frustration and fidgety, 
a person who's fidgety or anxious all the time, there's no peace, then that's not God. That's, that's the devil at work. If you don't see patience, but if you see impatience, then that's the devil at work. If you don't see kindness, but there's something else there, there's rudeness, guess what? That's the devil. So go through the list of the things of the Holy Spirit. There's, if you don't see goodness, you don't see faithfulness, you don't see gentleness, you don't see self-control. You, you know, uh, but those are the things that rob you of your healing and deliverance, family. So go after them. The next one, verse 13, get your home life in order. And I want to hurry up here and finish off so we can have some deliverance. Get your home life in order. Um, and uh, I'm just going to give you the scripture, and you can go take a look at it later. 1 Timothy 3, verse 3 through 17. Paul is writing about the qualifications of overseers, and it's noteworthy to view how one should keep his home. So I want you to look at that. Number 14, pray always. Our prayer life should be, always be direct, bearing upon uh, the fellowship we have with God. You should pray, and it should relate to how you relate to God. All right? Depending on your fellowship with Him. Uh, so pray always, and pray with that in mind. That's number 14. Number 15, be totally committed. Uh, totally committed means completely and entirely committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And now I want to just reiterate those so that you can go over them. I'm going to go backwards. So total commitment, pray always, get your home life in order, cultivate the fruit of the Holy Spirit, submit to authority, uh, to fellowship, give thanks and praise in all things, crucify the flesh, forgive, stay in the word of God, deal promptly with sin, make a positive confession, know your position in Christ, and put on the whole armor of God. Amen? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, Jill, can you get me a manual? Just a manual? Thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to go over some things here. We're going to uh, command some evil spirits out that, have, that steal your maintain, that, that steal your deliverance and healing. Father, I come against every evil spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. I, I command every evil spirit that has to come to steal, kill, and destroy my healing and my deliverance that makes me focus the attention on me. Those spirits. I bind you in the name of Jesus the I spirit, the me spirit, the my spirit, the pride spirit. I command you to be powerless in the name of Jesus that takes the focus off of God and puts it on me. I command every evil spirit that does that to be powerless, every self-centered spirit, self-deception. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out. Greed, I command you to come out. Distortion, self-centeredness, self-reliance, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, vanity, self-love, self-gratification. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. Everything that makes me the center of my life instead of Christ Jesus. I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus. That's right. Everybody say that. I command those spirits to come out of me in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit that prevents me from knowing my position in Christ to leave me in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit to come out in Jesus' name that hinders me from standing, taking a stand against the enemy. I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Doubt, disbelief, skepticism. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. 
out every spirit that convinces me of a lie of the devil. I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Out. Procrastination. I command you to come out. You, the spirit that puffs me up, that puffs me up with religion. I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus. Grumbling, murmuring, complaining, vanity. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. Temper, blame shifting. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Out, you, the one that makes me not deal with sin properly. In the name of Jesus, you, the one that, uh, that makes me stuff the sin down to deal with it for another day. I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get out, go, go, go. Out, anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Holy Spirit. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out, uh, bitterness, retaliation, revenge, unforgiveness. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. Out, uncleanness, lewdness. Out, in Jesus' name, sadness, sighing, sorrow, heaviness. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You, the spirit that prevents me from thanking God in all things, I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus. That makes me point a finger in another direction. I command that spirit to come out of me in the name of Jesus Christ. Go, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hard-heartedness, falsehood, wickedness, hatred, witchcraft. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Uncontrollable anger, out, self-deception, leave, get, get out, go unforgiveness and, and bitterness, deception, chronic dissatisfaction. I command you to come out of me in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, there be spirit that has caused a, a sickness or disease in your body. I, I, I come against every sickness, every disease, the spirit of infirmity that has attached itself to you, that has attacked you. I command your life I command the life of you, individual, individually out there, to come in order in the name of Jesus Christ. And for every sickness and every disease and the spirit of infirmity that has attached itself to you, to leave you now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that has attached itself to your head out that causes strokes and brain damage and psychosis and schizophrenia and paranoia. I command that to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. All confusion, all forgetfulness, leave in Jesus' name. Migraine headaches, out. Mental torments, out. The spirit of suicide, death, death in your head. I command that to leave you in the name of Jesus. Get out, get out, get out. Now head, head, be healed. Head be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Head be healed. Head be healed. Now, the eyes, the spirit that is a, has afflicted your eyes, I command that the spirit that, that has come to you to, to give you cataracts and blindness to leave in Jesus' name. Floaters, nearsightedness, farsightedness, lazy eye, I command it out of you in the name of Jesus all diseases and, and uh, weakness of the eyes, infirmity of the eyes, leave in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And you, the spirit of the lust of the eyes, lust, lust, pornography, lust of the eyes, go in Jesus' name, evil eye, witchcraft, dry eyes. I command the spirit of dry eyes to come out of you now in Jesus' name. I command your ears to be open, your, hand, your ears that causes problems and, and deafness, in your ears, ringing in the ears, spiritual deafness, uh, physical deafness in the name. Any inner ear problem, any problem in the inner ear, the anvil, the, 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 anvil, the hammer, uh, the drum, the eardrum, I command that spirits that attach to those things to leave you now in the name of Jesus. Earaches, ear infections, the, the, the infection that goes down the side of your ear into your throat. You, that spirit that has attached itself to you, you always have an infection there. I command it to leave in Jesus' name. Every spirit that is attached to your nose, I command it to leave your nose now. And Jesus, that loss of smelling, bloody nose, post-nasal drip, I command that to leave you in the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. You, the spirit that attaches to your mouth, 
uh, canker sores, uh, lip sores. I command them to go in the name of Jesus. Bad infections, gum infections leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. Tooth decay, get out, go in Jesus' name. Out, the jaw locking, grinding of the teeth, leave in the name of Jesus. Stuttering, stuttering, the bad breath, I command you to out in Jesus' name. That's right, that's right. You, the lady that called me up that had bad breath that didn't know what to do, went to every doctor. I command that spirit out of you in the name of Jesus. Get out. Go in Jesus' name. Out. <clears throat> now I command every spirit that, that has attacked your throat, the infirmity of the throat, uh, sore throats all the time. I command laryngitis. I command you out in Jesus' name. Oh, colds and viruses and goiters and all swollen glands, malfunctions of the esophagus, the vocal cords, I command that out in the name of Jesus Christ and for your throat to be healed. Now, every spirit that has attacked your back, that has caused pain in your back, pain, pain, pain in the vertebrae, out, out, out. That's right. You may have had an operation on your back to, to seal off a of vertebrae. I command that spirit of pain in your back to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. Curvature of the spine, go in Jesus' name. Sway back, leave in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, bursitis, multiple sclerosis, all spirits that have attacked your back, go in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus Christ. And every spirit that has come to your chest area, that's right, in your chest, I command all, all heart problems, lung problems, abnormal blood pressure, uh, irregular heartbeat, enlarged heart, clogged arteries, out, breast cancer. Get out, go in Jesus' name. Respiratory problems, unbalanced uh, cell count. Now, whatever it is that has attached itself to your chest, leave in Jesus' name. Go out in Jesus' name. I command every spirit that has attached itself to, to your stomach area, uh, your <clears throat> Every spirit that causes malfunctions and problems in your liver, your spleen, your pancreas, I command that those demons to leave in Jesus' name. Bladder, bladder, that bladder problems, kidney problems, urinary tract, bar, lar, large bowels, the small bowels, small intestines, I command them to, to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hemorrhoids, diverticulitis, I command the spirit of impotency. I command all spirits that are down in this area of your body to be healed in the name of Jesus and every demon to release its hold over you out. Everything, every, everything in your arms, your knees, your hands, crippling pain, arthritis, varicose veins, out, poor circulation, <clears throat> ingrown toenails, anything, anything that is attached to your body and your limbs, in your limbs, in your limbs. And now all those spirits that are uh, uh, into your vascular system, cancers and lupus, <clears throat> shingles and immune deficiency. I command every evil spirit attached to that. I command all spirits of AIDS, AIDS to leave. Get out, go in Jesus' name. AIDS, leukemia, get out, go. Pulmonary fibrosis, get out, go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 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 And now, Father, Lord Jesus, we ask you, we ask you to come, Lord. You to come and take up residence there. Lord Jesus, we give those areas to you. We want you to live in there, Lord Jesus. We want you to be the truth in these areas. We want your life in these areas, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want you, not us any longer, but you. We want to give you first place, oh God, in those areas. We don't want to be contrary anymore, putting us running things in first place anymore. We want you to be in first place. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, family, thank you. Um, <clears throat> remember, if you wish to come to our 
meetings, you must give me a call first because we are at a minute's notice of leaving the house. So, from now on until Jill's Jill's operation. From now on, give me a call first before you come over to make sure I'm here. If you get no answer, you'll get the answer machine. And I'll put something on the answer machine indicating that I'm either available or I'm not available. And if you hit that not available, then you'll know. <laughs> We're not here on Thursday. So unless you reach me personally, then don't come. And I'll try to put it, a new one on the Internet, whether I'm in Gainesville or whether I'm here. And I will let everybody know once again when I'm up and running again on Thursdays without interruption. But as of right now, starting right now, we're going to ask you to give a call. Now, we may be here next week. We may not. So give a call. Give a call. We're on uh, what they call standby. A wait list. A wait list. It's a standby thing. And so are you. You're on standby. <laughs> so, All right. Praise God. And we give glory and honor to Jesus in all things. Amen. And I'll see you next week. Hopefully. Amen. Don't forget to look at the Fund Me page. <laughs> Go Fund Me. Go Jill Marzullo. Jill Marzullo. Say what? Lung Go Fund Me, Jill Marzullo, Lung Transplant. And uh, you can contribute directly to Jill's Lung Transplant. Thank you. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Stop.